good afternoon. And um, thank you all for, for coming today. I want to reiterate first and foremost my concern for the nine-year-old child that was harmed during this incident that happened on Friday. I did have a chance to speak with her mom, to check on her and uh, to talk about how she was feeling from one mother to another. Um, I, I do want everyone to know that the redaction of the body-worn camera has been completed. We will be releasing that forthwith uh, today um, after this press conference and um, get that information to the public. I can assure you that mom was very concerned to make sure that her daughter's um, identity and information was protected. And so we want to make sure that we are being compliant and transparent, but we also want to respect um, a mother's right and a child's right to privacy and the way that they want to handle this. Um, we will have our person in crisis team reach out to the family. They've already, um, you know, our police department has reached out, but we recognize that there is other support and resources uh, that the mother uh, welcomed um, when I spoke to her and uh, very concerned about how this young girl was handled um, by our police department. It is clear from the video that we need to do more in supporting our children and families, and that is a top priority for our entire community and this administration. I want to make clear that Chief Harriet Sullivan and ECD, EDC Anderson have demonstrated the change that was needed to ensure that this information be provided to the public within a reasonable time frame. Within 12 hours of the incident occurring, RPD not only notified my office, but the public as a whole and also city, city council. Within 48 hours, we are making this body-worn camera video available for the public to view as well. This complies with my direction regarding informing the public when significant events like these occur in our city. It is a welcome change in progress in the right direction. It is a type of prompt public disclosure that will allow city government and our entire community to understand what happened and take whatever actions are necessary to improve public safety. I have directed the chief to conduct a complete and thorough and transparent investigation into this incident. Further, I welcome the review of this issue by the Police Accountability Board, of which I indicated to City Council when I notified them on yesterday that the Police Accountability Board should review this. Together, we must ensure accountability, detail the policy and procedures that need to be improved, and act with haste to make the needed changes a reality. I will work to ensure that not only the chief, but our city council and our community have exactly that. In fact, we are doing this work together already through our response to the governor's executive order to reimagine policing and will finalize our recommendation in the coming days, which we will put out to the public for public comment and public review. As it relates to the person in crisis team, I'm thankful to have our commissioner, Danielle Lyman Torres, here. Um, who is in charge of the persons in crisis team. Unfortunately, this was not an incident where the PIC team would have been called because of the type of initial call to 911. This call did not come in uh, a form that would have alerted the PIC team. Uh, it came in a way that would have alerted the response that was given, which was our police department. Unfortunately, there are a number of events happening at the same time at this location, uh, all of which required a police response. Uh, that said, long term, it is our goal. Remember, we just started the PIC team, the PIC team just launched. Um, it is our goal for RPD and the PIC team to be able to provide a joint response when necessary to improve how we protect the community. This incident will certainly inform those efforts. However, we should not unfairly disparage or demean the efforts of the, of the team when, we are truly, when they are truly not at fault. The questions um, of true motives anywhere um, as it pertains to this, you know, needs to be evaluated. What happened on Friday redoubles our commitment 
in my commitment to improving public safety in our community and reimagining policing for the benefit of all Rochester families and neighborhoods. Part of that effort is addressing what happened to this young lady, young, young girl, young child. I have a 10-year-old daughter, so she's a child. She's a baby. And I can tell you that this video, as a mother, is not anything that you want to see. It's not. We have to understand compassion, empathy. When you have a child that is suffering in this way and calling out for her dad, I saw my baby's face and her face. Compassion and seeing yourself and seeing your child, seeing your loved one is what you want no matter the situation. No matter the situation, I would expect that any of us in this type of situation to see our own. And that's what I saw, my own. I could hear the words of this child coming out of my child's mouth. This is not something that any of us should want to justify, should, can justify, and it's something we have to change. It is not an option. We must change how we do business, how we treat people. We have to understand that they, at, at the very core, are human beings. And we must treat each other as we want to be treated, as we want our loved one to be treated. And I know that that's a process. I know that that's a mind change. I know that that's a shift. I know that it's hard. And I don't know what it's like to be a cop. But I know what it's like to be a mother. I know what it's like to be a member of a community that feels disadvantaged, that feels that at every turn, there's harm, there's hurt, and undervalue. I know what it's like. And I'm asking for everybody, all of us, to understand, to hear, to listen, to empathize, but most of all, to act differently. Act differently. Do things differently. It is hard, I know. Because sometimes the training and other things don't do and is not prepared for this type of, 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 of call. But this is part of what we do. And if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. We're going to do it with empathy. We're going to do it with compassion. And we're going to be sincere. First and foremost. I'm going to ask that Chief Sullivan... Harriet Sullivan come forward and talk specifically about the event um, on that day. And again, ask um, you know, that you keep uh, the family of this young, young child in your prayers. Again, um, we will continue to work with her and her mom and try to do everything that we can to be of support to not only their family, but to all families in our community that are suffering in this way. Chief, Chief Sullivan. Uh, good morning. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that um, I'm not going to stand here and, and tell you that uh, for a nine-year-old to have to be uh, pepper sprayed is okay. It's not. Uh, I don't see that as who we are as a department, and we're going to do the work we have to do to ensure that these kinds of things don't happen. Um, we, when we came on board, when I came on board, I've talked uh, consistently about this being a uh, partnership with the community, that we're going to be transparent as we can, we're going to work together. And when I brought in uh, our executive deputy chief, uh, Anderson, he's of the same mindset. That's our mantra. Those are the things we've been working towards. And so far, we've done a lot of work in reevaluating our policies and have worked hand-in-hand -hand with 
the professionals that we brought in to help us get to that point. So please know um, that th th this process is continuous for us and it's never going to end. This is the kind of thing we're always going to be vigilant about uh, evaluating who we are and what we do as a department. Now I do want to invite our executive uh, deputy chief. Uh, he and I spoke quite a bit on this, um, but he really was at the helm of managing this process on the ground. So I think it would probably be best to have him come up and weigh in. He can explain to you um, some of the circumstances and some of the details. And obviously we'll be here once that's uh, completed. Thank you. Deputy. Good morning. I'm going to explain what transpired, but uh, before I get right into the business of what happened, I want to echo the sentiments of what you heard today. Uh, what the chief and I have been talking about is not just only providing training to our police officers, but really when we're asked what do we want, we want the heart of a police officer. We know that when we get the heart, we can get our police officers to respond with compassion with humility. And those are things that we feel are very important. On the 29th at about 3.21 p.m., our officers responded to 129 Avenue B for what was a report of a family trouble. Uh, during that time, the officers were made aware that a nine-year-old female was suicidal. She indicated that she wanted to kill herself and she wanted to kill uh, her mom, and she was just upset and, and concerned. Our officers responded and initially made an effort to, to try to secure her. We were also told that she was running away, and she did run in the initial contact with her. The officer was making an effort to try to get her secure where we can get her some assistance. And the officer told her that he wanted to help her. But the young girl was obviously upset um, over what transpired, and a number of things happened while the officer was doing that. Uh, the mother came, uh, attempted to create some, some conversation and dialogue, uh, maybe in some ways created some discipline for the behavior of her daughter, which caused the officer to have a diverted attention as he was trying to address uh, the mother's conversation with the daughter, the discipline, and trying to mitigate that situation. There were individuals that drove by, that were in cars that stopped to see what transpired, and, uh, and they also became a distraction for the officer. Now, as I explain this, I'm not making any excuses for what transpired. What I'm simply doing is providing you the facts as what, tra as what took place. The officer then decided to remove the young person, the female, the child, from the situation to get her in a car while we could get her assistance by calling AMR out in order to get her to Rochester uh, General Hospital to get assistance with respect to mental hygiene. And as he did that over time, um, the young child refused. Um, she thrashed around. She actually at one point kicked one of the officers um, in the chest and knocked his body-worn camera around. Now. From what was observed, it didn't appear as if she was resisting the officers. She was trying not to be restrained to go to the hospital. That's what it appeared to be. And as the officers made numerous attempts to try to get her in the car, um, an officer sprayed the, um, the young child with o OC spray to get her in the car, fully in the car. And the effects of that did work. Um, and that's what the concern that we have is, is the method that was used at that time. Um, she was transported uh, to Rochester General Hospital where she was re later released. And uh, that's the sum of what transpired. One other factor is that as the mayor said, and as our chief said, this is our effort to make sure that we're transparent, that we're responding to things relatively quickly. Uh, we brought our entire team and our staff together and the leaders. And while we are looking at a culture change, we need to make changes here. 
many of the leaders that I talked to as part of our command staff looked at this and they were very concerned with what transpired with this child. And so we do care and we're committed to change and we have a number of things in place to make these changes. And that's what we have. And I'll turn it back over to the chief. We can answer any questions that you may have at this point in time. Patty? Uh. I'll, I'll, I'll start off. Um, you know, first, as everyone knows, that we are currently um, working on Executive Order 203. Uh, we've had, we've been working on this for um, over a couple months. We have UCLM, the Police Accountability Board, Race Commission, as well as our Police Department, um, Wilmer Hill, um, and so we're going through this process of looking at policies, procedures, how we recruit. We've, um, a number of those documents have been released to the public already. Um, we are in the process of finalizing the, the, the draft document that we are going to be releasing to the public, hopefully within the next week or so. Uh, we had a five hour retreat on Friday. Uh, we plan to hit the ground again uh, on Monday to go through these documents so that we can get that to the public uh, to, to review, to understand um, what is being recommended as, as changes. And then, um, you know, with that information, we'll then go to city council. They will, of course, do their review. Um, and then they will, we will send that document to the governor. But that's just one step. Uh, there are many things that, um, of course, need to happen. I know that uh, the chief and the ECD are doing things right now internally outside of that document to also um, review and go through and make the changes that are necessary in order to change the mindset around how we deal, how we protect, and how we, above all, how we serve. ECD, you want to talk about that? Thank you, Mayor. As the mayor indicated, we are in the process of reviewing a number of policies and making changes right now as we speak. Also with this incident, uh, we're, we have met with many of the leaders in the organization that have taken a critical look at what transpired already and they're already making recommendations that we plan to implement this week. Uh, those, those changes will come with respect to actually talking to the officers themselves that were involved and, and getting them to take look at de-escalation, uh, having a, a tactical pause when need be, and really placing an emphasis on empathy and how we go about those tactics. But it's not just with the officers that were involved. It's going to be something that's extending to the entire organization. Our overall goal is to change the culture and to also recognize that many things that work that we do have, some of them do work. So some tradition works, but many of the things that we need to do in the future needs to change. So it is about a progressive change that the chief is talking about in the mayor. And it's important to know that not only is the mayor provided resources for us to change and allocated funding to organizations that are coming to change, but the chief is committed to that change and so are the, the leaders in our organization. Yes, you'll see all of that in Executive Order 203 recommendations. There may be some other things that change that are outside of that. Um, but, of course, this is a draft that will be released hopefully this week. We're, we're trying to get it done to be released this week. Um, and we have to have it passed by April uh, to go to the governor by April 1st. So any recommendations that may come from the family, um, from the family, from our community, um, when they when they see this document, is something that we will um, also um, make available for the public to see. Mayor, it took nearly 24 hours for any information on this uh, incident to be released to the public. So, first, what policies will the sidewalk be released for yourself and from the police department? And secondly, when the public did find out about this, several city council members put on social media they were asking that this body camera footage be released immediately. 
Um, actually, it did not take 24 hours. Um, I think that that's inaccurate information. Um, on the night of the event, so the event, I believe, happened on Friday around 3.30. Um, um, and so when the chief was notified, the chief notified me, I asked her to send over the body-worn camera video. It takes time to download and to be uploaded into the system. I did receive that, I believe, in the wee hours of the morning. And then after it was um, about, four, about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, I then watched the video. I immediately contacted city council. I sent that video to city council president and the vice president. I sent that video over to them. I think that there was something that was a glitch in the system that they couldn't view it. So we had to make sure that we got that. So I think that that is inaccurate information. Um, within a few hours, the public was notified through press release. Within another few hours, um, I came out with the statement, notified um, all of the respective parties, and then less than 48 hours later, we are releasing the video. And that is because the video has to be redacted. We have a child that is involved in this. As I said earlier, her mother um, is very concerned about her identity not being revealed and wanting to make sure that we protect the family and this child's rights as we release this video to the public. So I just want to make sure that we're very clear about when this information was provided and the time frame in which we were able to get this information out to the public. Thank you. So I don't think that that's accurate either. So I would go back and I, I'm, I'm, I believe that the, the police department released a press release on this um, that night. And therefore, there was more information that came forward at 11.30 the next morning after we were able to view and download the video because we want to make sure that we're providing accurate information. And so instead of providing inaccurate information, we want to make sure that we provide accurate information. We want to make sure that we are protecting those individuals that need to be protected in this. And so it was a series and a process. First, the press release notifying that an event happened. Second, additional information. Third, a statement. Fourth, city council came out with their statements last night. And then fifth, we're releasing this video after we were able to redact it and provide it to the public. So no, it is not it does not include every person. What we have is the 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 person that um, the officer who actually did the pepper spray and the officer that was on original call and we are going through the others to redact them and then we would make those available when when we can. But of course redacting is a process, but you get the, the gist and the understanding of what exactly happened from t these two body worn cameras and as we finish redacting the others, we'll make those available as well. I'm sorry? Yes, it, it shows the entire incident. I'm not sure. We will certainly, you know, as we get all that together, uh, make that available. Um, we just, uh, in the interest, as the mayor had said, but I believe in that, um, our goal is to be as accurate as possible, but also be transparent and timely. And uh, I'm not going to rush a process if we're running the risk that the information we're giving out is not correct. So just bear with us, you know, as we move forward. I, um, 48 hours to get a redacted, and then obviously a legal had to review it as well. So we have to go through those steps, as the mayor said, we want to protect the family and balance that with the right of the public to be able to see certain information. So we're always going to err on the side of um, being correct and protecting people that have a right to, to that protection. Thank you. No, that's no. There, we've worked out a protocol that there are certain calls that PIC will be called to. It's um, a new process, so we're taking baby steps to ensure that, you know, we can tweak things that are happening and make corrections where we need to. But 
Um, and on that note, does Dr. Lyman uh, Torres, she may want to add into that, but I did review and sign off on the specific calls that PIC would be called for, and, and this would not be... All right, I'll, I'll let Dr. Lyman weigh in on that. My question is, I'm under the impression that once I'm seen, RPD is not able to call and say, hey, things have changed here. We'd love to have some social workers or mental health people here. Can you send them? I'm under the impression that can't happen. Is that true? So what is true is that the PIC team is at this time being dispatched to a certain set of calls that they are going to in lieu of RPD that the co-response protocols that we have built into later into the pilot are still under development. Um, but RPD can speak to policies and procedures that they have regarding how they deal with changes on the scene and resources that are available. But the PIC team specifically, um, that co-response protocol procedure is under development, um, but we have a set of calls, as the chief just said, that the PIC team is dispatched to in lieu of um, RPD at this time. Thank you.